Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to talk all about clarifying shampoos, what they are, why you might need one, and how to figure out if it's a good one or not. I've gotten a ton of questions if I can go into details about clarifying shampoos from a lot of my hair care videos and drugstore videos. What is a clarifying shampoo? This is a shampoo that contains surfactants that will remove buildup from your hair shaft. It's intended to be used once a week and is ideal and needed for people who use a lot of hair care products like gels, sprays. I know people use a lot of different pomades and things like that. All right, and the reason it's important is those products that are used for styling, they lead to a pretty thick buildup on the hair shaft that with time can contribute to weighing down of the hair, breakage, split ends, frizz. It can make the hair not so manageable and prone to tangling. If you have more textured hair, this is not something you wanna cope with. So using a clarifying shampoo once a week will help in stripping off that product buildup layer. Now, surfactants and clarifying shampoos are really phenomenal at cleansing, not only at removing that buildup, but also actually removing oil, sebum, and dirt, not only from your scalp, but also from your hair shaft as well. Surfactants that actually cleanse and actually remove buildup are called anionic surfactants. There are many of them. They are added to shampoos for the purpose of actually cleansing. I find people get really confused and really misled when they're buying hair care products they think are clarifying shampoos or products that are truly cleansing. But if you look at the ingredient list, there are no anionic surfactants listed on the ingredients. They merely have other surfactants that do not cleanse. They are These other surfactants, which I'll get into, are things that rather than cleansing, impart manageability and softness, but they don't remove oil, dirt, sebum, and buildup. What are anionic surfactants? There are a lot of different surfactants that are added to shampoos that are anionic. Most commonly are the sulfates, laureth sulfates, laurel sulfates. Other anionic surfactants include uh, sodium laurel sarcosinate, sodium myrith sulfate, sodium perith sulfate, sodium stearate, alpha olefin sulfonate and ammonium laureth sulfate. I'm gonna list all of these down below in the description box so you guys don't have to remember all of this. And that way you can go and look at the ingredients on your hair care products and figure out if they've got anionic cleansing surfactants in them. These are very, very good at removing buildup and, and product debris, what have you, on the scalp and hair shaft. However, when these products remove all of that stuff, they actually also are obviously gonna take away some of the natural oils that help keep the, hot, the hair smooth, and they're actually gonna leave behind a negative charge on the hair shaft. Now that negative charge uh, results in a lot of frizz and static in the hair and can lead to breakage itself. So to minimize that, shampoos will have secondary surfactants added that are either what are called non-ionic surfactants or amphoteric surfactants. And these help in improving hair manageability. They're anti-static agents, but they're added to help buffer against the issues that happen with the cleansing that goes on from the anionic, anionic surfactant. They themselves do not cleanse. Amphoteric surfactants include cocomethyl propyl betaine as well as sodium laura amino propionate. These uh, amphoteric surfactants are have wonderful lathering ability. They don't sting, they foam really well, and they leave the hair very manageable, but they do not cleanse. So if you're using a product that is mostly cocomethyl propyl betaine, it's not truly cleansing your hair or your scalp. Now, another class of secondary surfactants that might be added to help undo some of the damage from the true cleansing are non-ionic surfactants. These include sorbitol esters, polyoxyethylene fatty alcohols, and alkanolamides. Mouthful. So yeah, again, check the description box. I'm gonna list these ingredients for you guys. Like, you don't need to memorize all this stuff. Uh, but definitely using a clarifying shampoo that's got a good good amount of, of truly cleansing anionic surfactant in it is gonna help in removing product buildup. Even shampoos that are marketed for everyday use, they won't, they typically don't have enough uh, anionic surfactant to remove that heavy duty buildup, but they will remove 
sebum, oil, dirt, etc. from the hair, just not heavy duty product buildup. So for someone like myself, I don't use products, so I don't use a clarifying shampoo, but I do use shampoos that have anionic surfactants in them, but are easier to tolerate on a daily basis because they have a lot of other conditioning agents and secondary surfactants. So I do find that there are products that hint around at being clarifying, but don't actually have these ingredients in them. Um, what products do I recommend? One that I recommend that's not actually marketed as a clarifying shampoo, it's a medicated shampoo, but will help in removing buildup, not only from the hair, but from the scalp. It really does a good job with the scalp, is Neutrogena's T-Cell Shampoo. This has salicylic acid at 3% strength as its active ingredient. Salicylic acid will help oily buildup on the hair shafts and the scalp, so if you have greasy hair, um, this will really be helpful for your hair shafts. And if you have dandruff, salicylic acid helps to control dandruff. It helps to lower the burden of Malassezia yeast that live in the scalp and contribute to dandruff and also inflammation and hair loss. So it's a really good shampoo to use once a week. And I like that one because it is free of added fragrance. It's really hard to find shampoos and conditioners that are free of added fragrance. Speaking of fragrance, a true clarifying shampoo is Neutrogena's Anti-Residue Shampoo. This product actually works really well for removing product buildup. Again, you only wanna use this once a week. Definitely don't wanna use it daily. Your hair will become very unmanageable. But using it once a week will help in removing that product buildup. It's got uh, alorith sulfate in it. And then the Paul Mitchell Clarifying Shampoo 2 is also very good. These, these products, these two especially, are really, really ideal for people who are using a lot of products. Um, whereas the uh, T-cell is more for scalp buildup and buildup on the hair of oil and dirt and maybe some product, but it's not a true clarifying shampoo, but it can definitely be helpful in that vein. And then another one that I love is Cruelty Free, a very affordable brand, is the Hosk Charcoal Purifying Shampoo. This has sodium C1416 olefin in it. The Neutrogena T-cell also has that in it as well as its anionic surfactant. And then it's got cocomethyl propyl betaine added as a secondary surfactant to help in kind of undoing the damage of the cleansing and making the hair more manageable. And then it also has charcoal added to it, which theoretically can help wick up some product buildup, some oil. Whether or not that works in shampoos and conditioners, I can't point to a study that says so, but it seems compelling. Anyways, that shampoo, really inexpensive and doesn't dry out the hair too excessively when used you know, only once a week. It's very good. So those are some recommendations from clarifying shampoos, but really understand that when it comes to removing oil, sebum, and dirt from your hair and scalp, you need an anionic surfactant to do that. Check the description box, I'll list those down below. But the other surfactants that are added to shampoos and conditioners are called secondary surfactants. They're not the primary cleansing agent. So if you're using a product that only has secondary surfactants in it, you're not gonna get true cleansing. This is a pitfall I find a lot of people can find themselves in when they're misled by certain marketing of sulfate-free products. Now I have a video all about sulfates. They are not the devil, but they can obviously be very drying, not only to the hair shaft, but to the scalp, but they remove that oily crud. So clarifying shampoos with anionic surfactants are needed if you are somebody who uses a lot of products to remove that buildup. That buildup is gonna to lead to hair breakage, damage to the hair, and make your hair not so manageable, a lot of problems. Now outside of a clarifying shampoo, still don't be afraid necessarily of sulfates in your hair care products. They are anionic surfactants, so they are true cleansing ingredients. And products that are marketed as everyday shampoos and moisturizing shampoos that have these ingredients in them, they have a lot of other secondary surfactants as well as moisturizing ingredients to really address and build upon the issues that result from actual cleansing. But the step of actual true cleansing is needed for everyone. It's really important for scalp health. When you don't cleanse the scalp on a consistent basis, that is what can lead to dandruff it also can contribute to hair loss through inflammation from over overzealous uh, malassezia yeast and irritation. Everyone needs to use some degree of cleansing on whether it be once a week basis, depending on what your hair will tolerate. But don't fear 
those anionic surfactants, even if you have a more textured hair type. But those of you who do use a lot of products, comment below on what clarifying shampoos that you use and find to be useful. Hopefully they're cost effective as well. I'm always looking for good cost effective recommendations. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.